What is up everybody, it is your boy Fry. thank you once again for tuning in to another video man. In today's video we're going to be looking at gain staging. We're primarily going to be looking at analog gain staging so you can really understand why it is important in traditional audio. We obviously don't, the main focus is really not to overload the next stage of, uh, you know, the audio path really. That's really what gain staging is. So we're going to be taking a look at this project that I have today and then we're going to be passing it through some gear and then I'm going to, you know, allow you to hear what it sounds like when we kind of overdo or mismanage our gain staging process. So if you've always wanted to understand gain staging, this is a really nice uh, example of how to get it right. So yeah, man, let's get straight into it. So pretty much what we have right now, we have this project and uh, this will actually be the project that we'll use for the mix competition. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna have some awesome prizes. We've got this beat right here and we're gonna start off with the beat. I always start off with the beat simply because it has the loudest element in it, okay, the 808. And, um, you know, the base region is generally going to contain the most energy. So we want to make sure that we manage that energy so that we don't overload our mix bus, as I said earlier. So we've got this beat. I'm going to play it for you as is without any gain staging. And then you can really watch me deal with the whole process. It's pretty simple. Um, obviously, we're not going to be doing any recording. But if you were recording, you'd treat it exactly the same. You want to make sure that your audio levels are set to where you're not overloading that first input stage. Meaning you don't want to be overloading your audio interface unless you're going for an effect. So yeah, man, let's get into it. So I'm going to play the beat as is, and then we will kind of look at different ways to actually gain stage. Let's do it. So there you go. That's pretty much the first stage. Let me just turn the volume up a little bit. But as you can see, we got a whole lot of clipping. No good. This is not the way that we go about it, right? So the first thing I like to do when I set up a session from a client is I would double click on the beat. Um, obviously, this can apply to any door, but really you just want to turn down the gain of the beat itself. And you can really see that I'm using this uh, VU meter. I personally like to monitor with VU meters simply because I am mixing analog and gear tends to sound better when you mix it to analog. Uh, you know, zero or VU uh, zero. And this also applies to digital plugins that emulate analog gear. So for example, if you're using an SSL channel strip, a waves compressor, an analog compressor, you know, the CLA stuff, it is most likely going to be modeled towards the same um, kind of level. So this is a meter that I'm using. This is the My Meter 2 from TB Pro Audio and it is 100% free, so you can check that out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna turn down my beat up until the point where I'm sitting around minus, you know, two to minus five. And I'll tell you why I leave a bit more headroom after I do it. So let's do it. So cool, that, simple as that, right? Now the reason why I leave headroom is because when I'm going to begin mixing, I want to leave some headroom on my mix bus so that I can actually apply different types of effects. For example, a bit of line distortion, right? I'm gonna be adding a little bit of line saturation. I wanna be able to add three to four dB of um, EQ. So as you can see right there, if I leave my VU floating at minus five, I can actually boost the, 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 the base up by four to five dB and still just be hovering around zero VU. It's very beautiful, right? So let's actually do that. I don't have the GoPro set up today, but I'm just gonna turn up the line input and then do a bit of EQ so you can really hear and see how much change we're gonna make. Beautiful, right? So I added a little bit of line input gain on the SSL channel strip, and now we are pretty much set to go. I might even turn down the output, right? So we've gone out of the the beat, out into analog gear, and then we obviously return on this channel right here. Fix that up. And you know, for shoots over zero, not too bad. What we can do is turn down the input again so that we leave with that saturation but don't actually overload our mix bus later on in the mix. Awesome stuff, right? I have also left some more headroom. As you can see, it was hovering around minus three, four, all the other elements in the mix because it's not just the beat that we're mixing. So now that we've done that and gotten the loudest element out of the way, Right, what we can then do is bring in our vocal. So when I bring in the main vocal, um, let's just enable it. It's overloaded and it's a bit too loud. Let's just enable our dry channel. Right, it's too loud, it's overloading. So what we're again gonna do is now 
add in some more gain staging, right? So I'm just gonna turn down the vocal up until the point where I like where it sounds. Got a pat like a Biza, double cut look like Frieza. Watch on me, my Frieza. Why me freeze up, new drip every season Snakes on me like trees, huh? Where I go, my chopper loaded, please don't give me reason Reason, reason, do shit for no reason Why you in my zone, get the fuck up on my region B.A.P. ape on me, I fight look like pigeon So there you go, pretty cool, right? Obviously we have this next section right here as well What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy paste this value Because we know that the recording is pretty much the same all the way through So let us just copy paste that and you know, y'all fight look like Pigeon. Come ain't they got song, Yves Saint Laurent. Fendi full of ones, got me wide awake. You mean not the same. What is And this is providing me with some beautiful starting results to then further go and do my mix. So, really, the art of gain staging is really just to make sure that you A, have the loudest element in check so it's not overloading the mix bus. And then you can begin to bring in all the other elements in the mix. Really easy, right? Now, you know, there can be other circumstances or situations that you end up in. For example, somebody could send you a mix and they might not want you to change the overall level of the mix. Sometimes I receive mixes that are pretty much 70% done. Please don't touch the vocal levels. Please don't touch the beat levels, right? Just pass everything through analog. Then what I could do if everything was too loud is simply bring everything down, right? Because that way I maintain their sonic integrity, but I'm also able to manage the project within my own studio. And then obviously, I wanted to make sure that the overall level was set again. You can see what I'm doing on the mix bus or on the master channel, not the mix bus. Um, there is a difference, right? The master channel is our final stage in the mix. Our mix bus is just, you know, primarily where everything meets up to go in and, and do some analog cool stuff. But what you could do, because obviously if we're going to monitor really soft, you know, that can be quite boring, right? So what we could do is just turn up our beat 8 dB, right? Because we are mixing to zero VU. Zero VU is going to be floating around, you know, if we were just to turn off the limiter. Minus 12 is generally where I'm aiming for when it comes to the digital uh, meter. But that way we can obviously just turn it up, you know, 8 dB. And then just monitor and do our mix at minus 3 dB. Um, and then we could obviously then, I generally will then switch over once I feel the mix is decent over to a mastering limiter so that I can really get some nice sonic uh, juice going on and just make sure that things sound good. Um, so yeah, but not that this is a bad um, limiter. I just personally prefer and trust this one more. Uh, but you know, that's just a preference. But you get the idea of what's going on, right? I have set these levels up and my whole template, and this is the one beautiful thing about the templates that I've been, you know, having on the web store is that you, it's pretty much gain stage for you. All you really need to do is, is make minute adjustments and turn off certain plugins you don't like. Um, and, and you're gonna get a really nice starting point. So, you know, hopefully this video makes sense. As you can see, um, I think I have a plugin right here that is set up just to have some levels going on. Y'all fight look like Pigeon. Come ain't they got song, Yves Saint Saint Laurent. Fendi full of ones, got me wide awake. You mean not the same, what a shame. Watch my 30 bang. My you know, and we're in the green right there, right? The DBU is, it's, it's looking good, it's sounding good. We're not overloading anything. Y'all fight look like Pigeon. Come ain't they got song. You know, we don't really need to overdo it. But you get the point of this video. It's really just making sure that you are mixing in a way where, you know, you're setting a level and then listening to the next stage of this track, right? For most people, you might not be doing all these advanced bussing techniques, but if you, for example, had your beaten vocal, you want to make sure that they just dropped in level enough to the point where on your master channel, you're not just kind of having this crushed mix. So this gives you the flexibility to do a lot more. So hopefully this video makes sense. Pretty simple and sweet. Hope you learned something. And uh, if you have any questions, post below. Check out my vocal recording course, vocal mixing course, and vocal enhancer for FL Studio. If you want to learn more about mixing, I'll check out the next video. Peace out. Thank you.